Hey, what's up guys, Nam here. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you five credit cards that won't reject you, and these are the absolute easiest cards that you can get. It doesn't matter where you are in your credit journey, whether you're starting from scratch, or you're a student, or you never had any type of credit before, or you're just an individual who made some mistakes in the past, and you're looking to repair your credit. Having low or no credit at all is no fun, plus when you're applying for more credit cards and you're getting denied, that just sets you back even further since your credit will drop a few points. We all know that credit is something that's necessary in this day and age. There are naysayers that say credit doesn't matter and pay everything with cash, but the truth of the reality is that most people don't have enough money to buy a car or a house straight cash. Having a good credit score will make you have a better rate on your car loan, your mortgage, and plus if you're even looking for a place to rent, the better your credit is, the easier it is to get approved for that place. So by the end of this video, I'll show you the absolute easiest cards that you can get and for some magical reason you don't get approved for any of these cards that I'm about to share with you, I'll give you some other tips at the end of this video as a bonus. Before I start listing off all of the cards, I'm not being paid by any of these credit card companies to talk about these cards. These are just my own personal recommendations from experience and research. So the first card that we will be talking about will be the Discover It Secured Credit Card. I must say that depending on your credit history, if you have no credit or you're trying to repair your credit, this should be the absolute first card that you should try to get. The main reason why I say this is that this is one of the very few cards that you can start off with that gives you any sort of points or rewards. This card is a secure credit card. If you guys are not familiar with what that means, I did make a video on this particular topic, which I'll post in the link in the description below. But in a nutshell, a secure card is a type of card that requires a deposit, which is the amount that you put in will be your credit line. Most people, they're probably aware of traditional unsecured credit cards. Like for example, when you hear somebody getting a travel credit card like Chase Sapphire or Chase Freedom, those credit cards are traditional credit cards. This is where banks look at your credit history and then they approve you for a certain amount of credit. On the other hand, secure credit cards require a security deposit, which limits the credit card issuer risk. So imagine if you wanted to stay at a hotel, they usually want a small temporary fee that's placed on your card just in case of any type of damages or expenses. But after you're done with your stay, if there's no damages or any drinks taken out of the mini bar, then that deposit is fully refundable. This concept is basically the same thing, but with a card. So this card requires a $200 minimum deposit and the deposit is 100% refundable whenever you decide to close your account or upgrade this card for a traditional line of credit. As much money as you put in, that'll be how much money that you're able to spend. So if you put in $200, the maximum balance that you can have on this card will be 200 bucks. Also keep in mind that in case if you do not get approved for this card, for some reason, the security deposit is refundable right away. With this card, there's no annual fee and this card is treated as a real credit card, meaning that you can build credit history with the three major credit bureaus, which are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. So now let's dive into the good part, the perks. You can earn 2% cash back at gas stations, restaurants, up to $1,000 in combined purchases each quarter. Plus, you can earn an unlimited 1% cash back on all other purchases automatically. And as a bonus offer, Discover will match all of the cash back that you earn at the end of the first year. Any points or rewards that you do earn also do not expire. Since this card is treated like a regular credit card, you have zero fraud liability, security alerts, and the ability to freeze your account in case if you misplace your card. And also with this card, Discover will start automatically reviewing your account eight months after you've had this card just to see if they can transition you to a regular line of credit. And if you're eligible, they will refund you $200. Great thing about this card is that if you go onto the Discover website, you can apply for a pre-approval, meaning that you can find out whether or not you can even get approved for this card without having the negative effects on your credit score. But there are some minimum requirements. You gotta have a job that makes money, a bank account, and do not have a pending non-Chapter 7 bankruptcy on your credit report. So the next card that we will be talking about would be the Capital One Journey Student Credit Card. Let me put this out there. You do not need to be a student to apply for this credit card. Even though this credit card is more targeted towards students, but anyone who is not a student can still get approved for this card. Capital One is one of those credit card issuers that are more lenient on credit history and credit scores. So with this card, they have a straight up reward system. You earn 1% cash back on all purchases that you make with this card. And in addition to that, when you pay your bills on time every single month, you get a 25% bonus, bringing your total earn rate to 1.25%. This is a big deal because most cards that are targeted towards students or people looking to repair the credit, they never offer any type of rewards. In addition, this credit card does not have any annual fees and zero foreign transaction fees. So if you're studying abroad or traveling overseas, this could be a great travel companion. And with this card, if you pay your first five monthly bills on time, 
you will be eligible for a credit line increase. The higher the credit line means the more money that you have at your disposal. Just keep in mind that just because you have more credit doesn't mean that you should always max it out. This just gives you the freedom in case if you want to make big purchases. Some other features with this credit card is that they give you zero fraud liability, meaning that if this car is lost or stolen, you won't be responsible for any unauthorized charges. You do also have this access to this thing called car lock, meaning that you can lock your card from a mobile app if it ever gets misplaced. Since this card is somewhat like a travel card, you get all the travel perks to come along with it, like travel accident insurance, car rental damage waiver, extended warranty, and travel assistance. So the next credit card that we will be talking about will be the Capital One Platinum card. There are two versions of this card. There's a traditional unsecured credit card and also a secured version. So if you're an individual who has limited credit history, like you're starting from zero or you're a student, I would just apply for the regular Capital One Platinum credit card. But if you're an individual who has defaulted on multiple loans or been declined for credit cards within the past three months, then I'll just go towards the secure route. So if you do decide to go with the secure route, there is a required security deposit of $49.99 or $200 minimum. So why there are different levels of security deposits is that when they do take a look at your credit, they will determine how much money that you will have to put down. So best case scenario is $49 and worst case scenario is 200 bucks. So let's just say that you do have the best case scenario, which is $49. They can still give you a credit line of $200. But the more money that you deposit before your account opens, the higher your credit line. So if you do decide to go with a secure card or the traditional regular credit card, both of them, they will review your credit within the next six months to see if they can increase your credit line. The sad thing about this card is that they don't offer anything spectacular like there's no rewards or any cash back. It's pretty basic. It's meant to help build or rebuild credit. So like the previous Capital One card, the security features and benefits are also included. You can also get security alerts for any potential fraudulent activity, zero fraud liability. You can also lock this card if you misplace it and you can have access to your credit report. Also with both of these cards, there's no foreign transaction fees and you get all the travel benefits like extended warranty, travel accident insurance, and car rental collision damage waiver. The next card that I will be talking about will be the Open Sky Secure Visa credit card. One of the key differences with this card compared to the other cards that I recommend is that this one does have an annual fee of $35. I rarely ever recommend any cards with annual fees because the benefits they have to outweigh the costs. What makes the Open Sky Secure Visa special is that they do not check your credit when you're applying, meaning that there is no negative effect to your credit score. One of the main requirements is that you gotta be at least 18 years or older and have enough income to afford a $200 deposit alongside with an annual fee of 35 bucks. So of all the cards that I mentioned so far, this will probably be the easiest card to get approved for out of the list. Unfortunately, this type of card does not have a type of reward system. It's pretty basic. You're just using it to build or rebuild credit. If you are a student that wishes to study abroad or someone who likes to travel outside the country, do not take this card with you because it has a 3% foreign transaction fee. Since this card is meant to build and rebuild credit, they do report to all the three credit bureaus. I recommend after holding your card for about six months, start reviewing your credit score either from sites like Credit Karma or your bank, they will have it sometimes, just to see where your credit score is at before the annual fee does come up. I would shoot for a credit score around 650 or better, then I would close this account to open up a traditional credit card. Number five, your personal bank or local credit unions. No matter who you are, if you do have a bank account anywhere, and if they also offer credit cards, this will probably be one of your best odds. Me personally, when I was in the military, I had a military issue bank, which is called Pacific Marine, which is now called Frontline, but they gave me my first credit card since I banked with them and they knew I had consistent income. It was a basic card. There was really nothing special about it. There was no cash rewards or anything like that. No travel protections. It was just a basic card. But this basic card helped me build my credit from nothing. So for instance, if you do bank with Bank of America or any other local bank or credit union in your area, you will have the best odds if you go in person. Talking with a real human really does help. The reason why it's so much easier to get approved at your bank or local credit union is that you already have a bank account set up there. They know how much money you have and they have direct access to your checking account. So now let's talk about some bonus tips. The first bonus tip is to always try to take the pre-approved offer. Some credit cards like the Discover It, they will allow you to get a pre-approved before actually putting in your application. Pre-approvals are never 100% accurate, but they're pretty darn close. They have no effect on your credit and they give you the best odds in determining whether or not you get approved. But now let's just say that you're not able to get approved for any of these cards or secure cards that I have listed. You got denial letters and your bank won't even give you a credit card. This is what you need to do next. You need to find someone who has a great credit score. 
the best place to start is with your family members, either your parents, your brothers or cousins, your aunts or uncles, or someone that is close to you. You can ask a friend, but usually mixing friendships with money, it really never ends up too well. So what you gotta know is, is if they have a great credit score, meaning that it's above 760, or a credit card that they have had longer than a few years. The longer, the better. So let's just say that you have an Uncle Don, and he has had the Chase Freedom Card for five years. What you gotta do is ask them if you can get added on as an authorized user. Whether you have no credit or bad credit, this is how you should approach it. Ask your Uncle Don if you can be added on as an authorized user, but you will not have access to that credit card. This is the absolute safest and fastest way to dramatically increase your credit score. Why this works is if your Uncle Don has a very high credit score, you basically adopt their credit score and have it integrated with yours so you have a dramatic boost. By telling your Uncle Don that you will not have access to that credit card, this will give him the peace of mind that you're not gonna screw up his credit and spend it on a bunch of random stuff. Of course, this is probably not ideal if you wanna have a credit card that you can actually use, but this is the perfect way to build your credit score in the shortest time possible. In the meantime, I would review your credit score either from a credit app or your bank's website just to see if there's any effect to your credit score. Once you get a credit score high enough like 650, this is when I'll start applying for basic no annual fee reward credit cards. Like for instance, the Bank of America Cash Rewards, the Chase Freedom, or the regular Discover It card. So this is basically your last resort if you're not able to get any of the cards on your own. If any of these cards and tips that I mentioned doesn't help you get a secure card or one of those beginner cards, then your credit needs a different approach. If you have had a recent bankruptcy, it's gonna be really difficult to get any sort of credit. And if you're under the age of 18, you won't get approved unless you get added on as an authorized user. And in addition, if you have no income, no credit card issuer is gonna give you a credit line. All right guys, so that pretty much does it for me. Make sure you give this video a like because that really helps support the channel. Subscribe if you wanna learn more about credit cards or just personal finance in general. Come hang out with me some more at my videos over here.